We all know Arch Linux is a great operating system and in fact it's so great that many people who want to make their own operating system will use Arch Linux as a base. They will pick and choose some elements from Arch Linux that they will put into their own system and because while I think probably Ubuntu is a more popular base so there are much more Ubuntu based GNU slash Linux distributions than Arch Linux based. Uh, operating systems out there because Arch Linux is a meme and people like to say that by the way I use Arch because that's cool and you got internet points for that. So many people who actually don't use Arch Linux but use some Arch based distribution will still say they use Arch by the way and because why not? I already made a video in which uh, I discussed Manjaro Linux and there is a very long discussion in that video which some viewers even complained about how long it takes me to get to the point because I spend a very long time discussing what makes it a, what makes a distribution a distribution and why Manjaro is not really Arch Linux. That video actually gets views all the time so this is one of the videos that are still watched even long after it has been published on this channel so you can take a look if you are interested. But today I wanted to do a more practical approach in this video and just uh, go through a few of the most popular Arch Linux derivatives and talk about how they differ from Arch Linux. And for that purpose, let's uh, define what Arch Linux is. Well, of course, the only true definition of what Arch Linux is that Arch Linux is whatever the Arch Linux developers say Arch Linux is. But in general, how we can approach it is that Arch Linux is like an x86-64 uh, distribution so it's only a 64-bit uh, architecture is supported but Arch Linux, and Arch Linux uses uh, systemd as it's uh, in its system and other things Arch Linux uses the Arch Linux repositories of course uh, and uses Pacman. Pacman the package manager will automatically or like by default download the packages from these repositories in the Arch Linux a repository from which there is a community and extra and uh, I guess core is the third one like the most most stable one the most important one there is also community testing of course if you want to uh, test some uh, new versions things like that but the thing is that these are the official repositories these repositories contain packages that have been pre-made by the Arch Linux developers so for example 0AD it's been compiled, so it's a binary package that you will just download and Pacman will just place the files in your file system and will be ready to run. Arch Linux also has the AUR, has access to the AUR, but the AUR on the other... So it's very different than the official repositories in that the AUR... If we go back to the AUR home, we could do an empty package search, for example. When we look at the packages, here instead of the pre-made binaries that we would find in the official repositories what we will find here is if we want to install something from the AUR we will have to get this package build file by ourselves and this package build file usually just points to some uh, source code so it's just points to the source code somewhere on the internet your computer will download this source code from the internet to your own hard disk and the binary will be compiled on your own computer and then the package will be made and then it will be installed by Pacman. So it's a more, much more involved, much more complicated process. Of course, uh, uh, the AUR also contains a few binary packages which are kind of more similar to the things that you have here but instead of the pre-made packages it will just download the binary uh, the executable binary from the internet will make the package and then Pacman will install it on your computer so it's still like a two-step process but the binary can be pre-made there. So these are like I guess the most important components of Arch Linux and uh, when we take a look at some derivatives like Artix, Artix Linux is actually a derivative that is quite popular with people who don't want to use the in its system of Arch Linux which is systemd so Artix contains three other uh, three other init systems so it's uh, like the most important thing about it that it differentiates from Arch Linux is that it's systemd free of course a lot of the 
packages will contain systemd specific files in it so for that reason Artix has its own package repository and you can browse its packages by categories on their uh, website this website contains their package build files but when you download the packages you use pacman the pacman in Artix is configured to pull the packages from these repositories and these are pre-compiled binaries that are made by the Artix team in most cases I think it's so if I just scroll back here in the news what you can see is that Arch repositories are made optional so Artix already has everything in their own repositories so they don't need to download anything from the Arch official repositories because they have everything if we go to the next contender here Manjaro Linux Manjaro Linux is a very popular operating system it is made to be accessible to everyday users who don't really want to understand the inner workings of the system to the degree that Arch Linux would want you to understand these things and it will offer like graphical installer which is very different from how you install Arch Linux which is uh, only supported in uh, two ways and both of them involve command line installation and uh, manually picking the packages you want to install while Manjaro has like a few default packages and uh, configure their the software in a way that is more friendly towards new users who don't want to get involved in the nitty-gritty of, uh, of a Linux based operating system and they have of course for that their own repositories so the Manjaro repositories will be totally independent from the Arch Linux repositories which means they compile their own software and they will even go to the length where they will probably so in most cases Manjaro uses a little older versions than Arch Linux so the update is not as regular or not as fast as in Arch Linux which uh, might cause some problems with the AUR so of course the AUR works in a similar way but other unless like uh, it is like not officially supported of course so you have to use it at your own risk but even though that Manjaro offers its users a very simple ways to handle stuff from the AUR while on Arch Linux basically you are on your own <laughs> the most accepted tool is just to install something from the AUR using the make package command which we use on this channel a lot because that's a very powerful tool from Arch Linux which lets you make your own packages but of course Manjaro has like a much more different approach when it comes to how the user should interact with the system so they will offer the graphical user interface programs that will help you to install stuff from the AUR but this will be like the similar process under the hood it's a similar process that how you would do it on Arch Linux which might make because of the different versions so Manjaro does not keep up to date to Arch with every every uh, package so some of the AUR packages that would depend on like the newest newer packages that are only in Arch but not in Manjaro these things won't work all right so with that let's move to another popular Arch Linux based operating system which is also aimed at the the less uh, I guess less command line inclined <laughs> users or who just want to get through their installation process without any hassle which is Garuda Linux it's a very it's a relatively new uh, distribution compared to Manjaro and it has a little different approach the most important thing for them I guess is their custom themes and a few uh, uh, modifications like a kind of default file system using BTRFS, uh, ButterFS as their default file system with snapshots and they have their own Garuda Assistant tool for uh, achieving a few of the common tasks so their uh, approach is also to make it much more easy to users who don't want to go into the nitty-gritty of how an operating system works and just want to handle their computer as it is uh, they offer a lot of tools for that like a graphical user interface for the bootloader configuration and network assistance and installing gaming software and a lot of things like that so I guess the most important thing is that 
Garuda Linux is different by the installation process, it's different by its focus, but um, what about the package repositories? So the thing is there is nothing like Garuda Linux's repository. All Garuda users use is some Arch repos plus, plus chaotic AUR, which, um, well, I am not 100% sure that is true because their additional software like this GUI stuff, are they in the Arch repositories? I don't think so. The themes also probably not. So I don't know what they exactly mean by um, not having their own repositories, just using uh, the same things as the Arch Linux. I don't think that's, that's exactly true. But this chaotic AUR, that's what's very important. So actually what they could do is they could have like a repository which only contains those very specific things like the, these uh, Garuda specific themes and those GUI applications, those like, I don't know, 10, 20 packages in that one repository and everything else is pulled from Archonix. That's probably what this means, but I couldn't find any more detailed information on that. So if you know, leave them in the comments down so other people watching this after you can read your uh, smart comment there and informative comment there. And chaotic AUR, that's an, actually a very interesting uh, uh, thing to have this chaotic AUR, which uh, is basically, I have to search it up on the internets here, which, uh, and I will show you once it's up there, but it's a project that basically gets the AUR packages or the things in the AUR and builds the packages by itself. So it is an automated building repo. So it, as I told you, the AUR just contains the package build scripts. So it just contains kind of the recipes of how to make the package, but Chaotic AUR will just automatically download those recipes. And if there is some update, it will build the new binaries and you can just easily add the Chaotic AUR to your uh, Pac-Man mirrors, I guess. There is some kind of uh, comments here what how you can do it. And uh, that's it. Most packages available in this repo are automatically built from their respective AUR source package, but some are not. Yeah, so you could... Um, Check that out, but that is basically what Garuta uses for the AUR access. So unlike Manjaro or Artix, well, I'm not sure about Artix, but unlike Manjaro, you are not building the AUR packages locally, or unlike Arch Linux, you don't build them locally. You trust someone else to build the binaries and download them from there. And so our last contender here will be the Endeavor OS, which is a lot of people consider as the most close to Arch Linux because it's supposed to be just just an installer, which is, um, I don't know if that is true because, well, they actually have uh, additional welcome screen, but um, maybe there is the only thing. All options of basically sounds it. Uh, oh, and um, I guess they have some defaults defaults that are installed on your system like um, their goal is not exactly the same as Manjaro or Garuda so they don't really target the people who don't really want to do anything with their system it's not really targeted towards people who just want had to have like a very simple and fast installation procedure with sensible defaults it is more aimed to people who just I guess lazy <laughs> installing Arch Linux but know what they are doing. I'm not 100% sure, sure because if we take a look at these uh, screenshots here, what it does is it basically uses this Calamari installer to go through the same process that you would do on your own in the command line selections, I guess. And there is this uh, package selection screen where you can, I don't know exactly how this would work, but Basically, this is where you tell the installer what packages you want to install. So, 
I guess you still have to manually select what you want on your system even though you don't have to type things into the command line which would be quite different from the Manjaro installation process which offers you some kind of sensible defaults and uh, that will be it but Endeavor very close to Arch except for the installation on this welcome screen which offers you few options here like update mirrors, update system and package cleanup and display manager and have a default wallpaper for Endeavor and I have to tell you that these kind of artwork for Endeavor these look very cool so maybe even if you're not using Endeavor you would be interested in their artwork so anyways I guess uh, this is the end of this video here this is a few Arch Linux based operating systems and what the difference are between real Arch Linux and, and uh, Arch Linux as children or <laughs> Arch Linux as um, I don't know what should I call them just derivatives derivatives are the official name so I just call them derivatives I guess so now you know and respect the developers of these other distributions by you know enjoying their work and telling everyone that you use Manjaro you don't have to say you use Arch Linux when you definitely don't, you don't use Arch Linux I mean I use Arch Linux but I'm not gonna tell people that well I actually use Ubuntu but with Pac-Man and the Arch Linux repositories that would make no sense <laughs> I guess and if you use Manjaro you use Pac-Man with the Manjaro repositories and Manjaro's default. So I guess what I'm trying to say is don't fall for the meme. Just saying that you use Arch Linux won't make you a bigger person, won't make you a better Linux user. If you actually use Arch Linux, that also doesn't matter in the grand scheme of thing, things. You should the only reason you should use Arch Linux for is because you like the way it's made and you and it matches your personal taste which is why I use Arch Linux. If Arch Linux wouldn't uh, meet my own expectations, what I want from my operating system, I wouldn't use Arch Linux, I would use something else. So I guess, uh, moral of the story, use a distribution that, is, uh, that fits your use case and then be proud of it. And I will see you next time. Bye bye.